time for the Soriano Network feature story. And as you know, I did a PSAL high school sports show for about a year and a half over on WSIA Radio. And we had a lot of coaches on, a lot of players on, never anyone from the higher-ups. Even when we had that uh, the whole Tottenville situation with the three forfeits and there was a uh, something with the basketball realignment and also with the basketball finals not having a home and nobody from the PSL higher ups would come on my show because you knew I would just give it to them you know I'm not that guy that's going to kiss ass to have somebody come on my radio show. I'm not the guy. I am not the type of person that's going to kiss ass to get somebody on my podcast. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be fair. And I'm going to give my subscribers and my listeners what they want. Which is usually questions that they want answered. And I'll ask them. Or I'll attempt to get information to answer them. So, Grand Street Campus, senior Ramal Ashby, very talented running back. There's no denying that. And he showed that last Saturday when he rushed for 129 yards on 17 carries. 28-22 victory in the semifinals over Curtis. Now, they advanced to Brooklyn. Uh, They advanced to the city championship today, excuse me, and not against Brooklyn, against Erasmus. Ashby, however, also carries with him a criminal record. And according to reports, the 17-year-old was arrested in April of 2014 for firing a gun and injuring three people. He was released after making $50,000 bail. Then on October 30th of this year, Ashby was arrested again. This time for possession of a weapon. And according to New York One News, police say he had a loaded 380 semi-automatic handgun. But Ashby was again released and again made bail. Ashby ran for 845 yards this year. Again, an incredible player. Played in the October 24th contest against Erasmus. But he missed the last two regular season games against Jefferson and Utrecht. Winless Jefferson, 4-6 and six Utrecht. He was also absent from Grant Street's quarterfinal win over Wagner. But he was there last Saturday against Curtis. And he played a key role in the victory. And he's scheduled to suit up later today at noon at Yankee Stadium versus Erasmus. And I just gave you the report. And I gave you all that criminal stuff. And all of this, all of this according to the rules of the PSAL, is perfectly legal. Perfectly legal. Head coach Peter Gamardella from Curtis said, quote, The way it works is that the school determines final eligibility based on the PSAL rules, and the school ruled him eligible to play. He had a pretty good game against us, end quote. Now, this is the New York City Department of of Education, which oversees the PSAL, requires that student-athletes have passing grades and that they maintain a 90% rate of attendance. Apparently, however, there are no rules regarding criminal allegations. So you can shoot up somebody, get off, and be playing football on a Saturday afternoon. And that's all legal. It's all perfectly legal. Gamardell said again, quote, No one knew for sure regarding the rumors. We just knew that he was a great football player. No one knew of any specific charges. End quote. Now, once once word leaked out about 
the two arrests that Ashby has had. Gamardella said that the Curtis officials called the PSL about Ashby's eligibility, which is good on Curtis's part. That's heads up by them. The PSL in turn called Grand Street. But the principal ultimately determines eligibility. Now, I wonder if the kid, I wonder if Ashby hadn't been in school because of the period of time he was away due to the charges. He couldn't have been in school. He was in jail. But I am not in the school. Peter Gamardell is not in the school. Nobody from Curtis is in the school. None of you, unless you're in Grant Street, are in the school, so we don't know. And again, it comes down to Grant Street's principal. Now, Curtis says that their reason of inquiry was to see if the kid was in, was to see if Ashby was ineligible due to missing too many school days, not because of the charges. But see, that shouldn't be it. I mean, granted, those those are the rules, and and they're and they're searching that, and obviously, in terms of the PSAL rule book. They're well within their rights of asking for that. But my God, does Grant Street Campus have any shame? This kid's got a criminal record, and this is why we have problems in this country. Because stuff like this and behavior like this is not stopped now. So this kid's going to go on, and God knows what else he's going to do, because he's not going to learn a lesson. Oh, that's okay, Ramal. You had a 380 semi automatic handgun. That's okay. You fired a gun and injured three people. But, you know what? We need you to play football. Because we really want to get that championship. We want to win. Football, yeah! Folks. What Grant Street Campus is showing you is that a quest for a PSAL city championship in football is more important than teaching a young troubled man a lesson. Oh, that's okay. You just got out of jail? Oh, that's good. Can you make practice tomorrow? Wonderful, wonderful. That's the example you're setting. He wasn't even benched for a, for, for a quarter. You look at it. He was not even benched. Not even a play. This kid got out of jail and they went right in. Now, I can't really kill the coach because what's the coach going to do? If, if the principal rules him eligible, unless the principal thought he would leave it in the coach's hands. But then again, the principal has the authority to say, no, I'm not ruling you eligible. This does not represent Grand Street Campus athletics. This does not represent Grand Street Campus football. And he had that choice. The principal of Grand Street Campus had that choice. And the principal did not act on that choice. And it's a shame. It really is a shame. And you know, we, we spoke about this on the podcast about parenting. About how... You just look at, at at some of these parents nowadays, they're just not doing their job as parents. And this right here is an example of not setting a, an example. Maybe that's me, but if I'm the principal of a school and a kid's got a record like this, I don't care if he's, ru- if he, if he's rushing for 945 yards. He's not playing. I'm sorry. But I guess winning a football championship at the Grand Street Campus is more important than setting an example. I guess that's that's the most important thing. I don't know. Tom Coughlin pulls a Todd Bowles and leaves points on the board. Giants lose. Jets win. Also, is the GOP in trouble? And President Obama speaking tonight. And I'm I, I want our president to have a kick-ass speech tonight. I want our president to deliver. 
Because after all, he is our president of our great country on God's green earth. Back after this Soriano podcast. <laughs> 